nothing but praise for the Queen's uh, foresight with this trust. And what it is, is the Queen's vision. She's always believed in the power of the Commonwealth and young people as a force for good. You've summarised it beautifully, Nicola. I think everything that my grandmother wanted to achieve when she took this huge responsibility on, she, she's managed. No one could have predicted how the world was going to change in, in such a short space of time, especially with the digital space. But hearing you guys, knowing the broad spectrum that the, the QCT sort of engulfs, you guys are the definition of the 21st century Commonwealth and what it means to be part of it. You know, you are there standing for equality, for mutual respect and for fairness. And I think that is... That is something that every single one of you should be incredibly proud of. Yeah, it's very true. And I think, you know, from my standpoint, being newer to the, the world of the Commonwealth, right? I lived in Canada for several years, but it wasn't until joining the family and um, that I was able to meet so many young people throughout the Commonwealth. If they came with a question, they always offered a solution. Yeah. And that's what I think is so inspiring and, you know, why I'm incredibly proud to to be able to work with the Queen's Commonwealth Trust, but why, you know, it's, it's the continuation of the legacy of, of your grandmother. The solutions is the most important thing I learned in the, uh, in the army. Don't come to the table with a problem unless you've got a solution. Hmm. Finally, they say something about the queen, something nice about the queen. Right. I don't understand. Once again, I don't understand the situation at all, but go Rods. <laughs> no, I was just going to say that I, I always find it, even in a, in a setting like this, where they are talking about something sort of formal, which is the, that organization. I'm, I am always sort of like a little shocked when that he refers to her as my grandmother and not, right. you know, and, and not, and not the queen. And that happened twice in there. And I just think that, you know, this is probably one of those things that was difficult to consider when they made the decision to, to leave the royal duties. It was probably an organization like this that they really, that weighed on them heavier than say other things that they were leaving behind. But it's good that there's, you know, still a part of it. And they, you know, it looks like they, they, they believe in it and their hearts in it. And it doesn't look like they're in, in, it doesn't look like they're making appearance that they're forced to do and saying things that they may not believe. This actually looks right. like this is something that they're very much still into, which is good to see. Yeah. yeah, and I think that, you know, how someone wants to live their life is up to them. If they don't want to be there, if they don't want to be operating the way that they were within the royal family, that is fine. But you can never take away from the queen and what she has done just in terms of charity and how she's given back and the changes that she's made. So I think any normal person uh, that has the opportunity to contribute with the queen in that way would love to and would want to. So I'm not surprised that they're still involved with the Commonwealth in that way. Um, and on a side note, it always trips me out when Meghan stares at Harry when he's talking. I'm always like, what are you looking at? Like, are you, is there something in his teeth? Oh. Like, <laughs> just, <laughs> like what, what's happening? Like that. What y'all looking at? <laughs> Can I see two? Uh, Nelson says, oh. Yes, I'm with you. I'm with you. Okay, you can keep on doing that. I'll, I'll read some comments. Nelson says, Harry's so eloquent, okay. uh, genuine. Uh, Noah says, they both look so beautiful and relaxed. I don't know if I'm shocked the queen has been in Harry's entire life. So the praising her work seems normal to me. Uh, Katharina says, I think it's great that they support the causes that they can get behind, which is also supporting the queen. Um, let's see. Oh, Cheryl says, I love uh, Harry and Meghan. Carol says, the guys, me and you, Roz, are anti Harry and Meghan. I haven't even said anything. <laughs> well, I don't know why they, they think that. But, well, I mean, I I've, said, I've, said, I've said stuff over the years that, you know, came from the heart, but I don't wish them ill in any way. I no. want them to have a long and happy life and get to do the things that they want to do. But, you know, I, not everything is perfect. I don't no. agree and with was, everything that every single person does or says. No. And I was judgmental about how they did this. Like, I was disappointed that they kind of went behind the Queen's back when they did that sure. announcement because I don't think the Queen has done anything negative to them. But, no, once again, I'm still confused by this. So they're still working with the Queen's Commonwealth Trust. They still have their titles, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, which I don't get how they still have those titles. So I'm still not completely sure what they've given up. I think probably part of it is because we're all in isolation that, you know, the royals aren't doing the normal things and Harry and Meghan aren't probably doing what they want to be doing right now. So if things were all normal, maybe we'd be seeing them, you know, we'd really see that contrast. But right now, I'm not seeing what has really changed in their roles up to this point, other than the fact they've moved to... LA because they've still been working with various organizations that they already were, were, were working with. 
I think that was a big part of it. I think that a lot of this was cutting ties with the parts of that family that they didn't want to right. be associated with. Yes, they're living the best of both worlds right now, in my opinion. If you can kind of still be a part of the charitable efforts, still have the title and the clout that comes with it, but you're somewhere in Montecito now, away from everything <laughs> and away from the paparazzi in that sense and the news headlines. I mean, no matter what they do, they're going to get picked apart, uh, which is unfortunate, but it comes with the territory. They knew what that was. Um, but I just think that they're in a really interesting position. I mean, from the beginning, when this started to happen, when they got married, I literally placed bets amongst my friends, people in press, because we, we have these conversations all the time. And I was like, they're going to move to California. Megan is going to be friends with Oprah and Ellen. She's going to create a whole new brand. She's going to go back to acting. I mean, it's very difficult to take someone like her, a California girl, put her in the royal family. Um, well, she chose to be in the royal family, um, but not act not get to do the things that you are also passionate about. I think she's going to come back to the celebrity life in that sense in Hollywood. I really do. Mm -hmm. That's my bet. Yeah, Chelsea and I'm already says, accurate. And <laughs> Chelsea and George, George, George Sierra just both say they just gave up the title of Royal Highness, which I don't really know. Yeah, what does that entail? Give me it up. Uh, Thulani just says no, what this they, is a lost opportunity what they, what by they, the royal they, family. Go. What they gave up or what they walked away from was any future opportunity where somebody looked at Megan 